Taking a composite time lapse of the full moon can result in an awesome image. People will love it and you will have a memento from a unique experience. But it won't come easy. Getting a good full moon time lapse requires scouting, planning, luck, patience, and stamina. In this video I want to go over some tips for photographing an amazing full moon sequence and show you what the experience might actually be like for you based on my recent all night shoot at Osaka Castle in Japan. Number 1. Scout your location ahead of time. This full moon was scheduled for a Friday night so on Wednesday afternoon I went to Osaka Castle Park to find a spot for my camera. From this area by the moat the castle is up on a ridge. Osaka Castle is cool looking but will only be a silhouette in my photos. I know the moon will be in this general part of the sky, but for now I'm concerned with things on Earth. Because number two is, find an interesting composition. A time lapse of just the moon alone in the sky can make for a boring, overly scientific photo. There should be some other interesting thing in the image. I'm going for the castle and the trees on the ridge. Since the moon will be going down through the frame, I'll shoot vertically. I was all set on this spot, but then wandering around a little bit, I found this angle just a few meters away. Those bare tree branches creeping around the castle are so cool, and there's still plenty of room for the moon overhead. And speaking of the moon, number three, check the moon's path. I use the Photo Pills app on my phone, which has an augmented reality view. Just stand in the spot, scroll to the time you'll be shooting, which for me is very early on the 11th, and it'll show you the moon's path. So, having found my spot, and that the moon will be in my shot between 2.30 and 6.30 a.m. or so, it's time for a step that I have never failed to complete. Number four, get distracted by birds. Yes, the technical, astronomical, and meteorological challenges of night sky photography are thrilling, but I mean, birds, strangely therapeutic. Is this just me? I mean, they fly, they sit and yell at each other, they float, they do, they, uh, I don't, I don't know what this is. Uh, maybe that's enough. I don't think I should be filming this. Anyway, I'm sorry. Back to the moon. Late Friday night, I biked back to my spot. The park was dark and quiet, but there were some lights so I could set up my tripod and finalize the exact composition. Once you start, you can't change the position at all for the rest of the night. Ideally, you'll be doing time-lapse moon photography on a clear night. Here, it was already getting hazy by like 2 a.m. But the details on the moon were still sharp, even to the naked eye, so I thought it would be okay. Eventually the moon will enter your frame. It's time to start. Should be about, I don't know, 45 or 50 pictures of the moon by the time it's all done. Number five, have a system. I wanted a photo every five minutes, which is often enough to have the moons close to each other but not touching. My system was, keep an eye on the time, and every five minutes, turn on the camera, snap a photo, check it in the viewfinder, and turn it off. Then pace around and try to stay warm for four and a half minutes. May I remind you this was early January. I even wrote a list of the times out beforehand, and after each photo was done, I'd circle that time. It helped me stay focused and on track. Plus, routine helps you not to lose your mind. Number six, take the photos. For several hours, this was my life. Excitement every five minutes, book ended by pacing around listening to podcasts and not checking my blood sugar. Even holding my meter in my underarm for several minutes didn't warm it up enough. At about 3.30 a.m., a guy jogging by stopped to chat with me. I was going to do this video about five minutes ago, but a guy jogging by stopped to talk to me. And he's a big fan of American uh, college football. So he's talking about all these places he likes. And he, he knows that Georgia is in the SEC. I told him I was from Georgia. Anyway, here's the state of the thing. It's very hazy. I think I'm still getting the moon fine, but I don't see any stars at all. It could clear up, but I don't know what's happening with this. I don't know how this is going, but it's fun. The haze worsened, and at times I had to adjust my camera settings to let more light in. Also, huge dewdrops started covering the lens at one point. Fortunately, I just happened to bring a microfiber cloth to wipe it down with. Another guy with a camera showed up at around 5.30 and we chatted a bit. He showed me some pictures on his phone he'd taken on other nights. Another fan of moon time-lapse photography. He was annoyed at the haze tonight though. Finally morning came. The sky got light just as the moon disappeared. It was a long but satisfying night. If you've made it this far, you've already succeeded in a sense because you've put in the effort. 
My immediate reward was a lovely sunrise that stirred and warmed the city, something I usually sleep through. As I biked home, I wondered if my images would work. I hadn't missed any of the five minute intervals, but with my changing settings and the haze, I didn't know how they'd stack together. Number seven, put them all together. Over the nearly four hours, I took 46 images. I used star stacks to blend the images, including the first one where the sky is dark blue instead of black. Since star stacks keeps only the lightest pixels, all the moons stay in the final shot, as does the blue rather than the black sky. I just removed these lights near the castle and lightened the sky a little bit to bring out the trees in the castle more, yielding this final image. The changing haze and my changing camera settings are why there are gaps in a couple places. The haze lessened towards the end, but my camera was still set to take in more light, which is why the moons near the castle are brighter. They look like explosions. It was an accident of the conditions, but actually I like it. It's probably my favorite part of the photo. At any rate, striking to see the path of the moon, that graceful curve through the frame to the horizon. So that's it for now. To recap, plan your location well, including foreground interest and the path of the moon. Look to the birds for inspiration. Oh, look at that one. And then, on the night, go to the spot and set your camera up exactly how you want it. Have a system to take regularly spaced photos, and keep an eye on each one to see if you need to adjust your settings along the way. Then go home, blend them together, and do any lighting or color tweaks you want. Photographic glory is now yours. I hope you got some good tips from this video, both what to do and what to avoid. Thanks for watching. See you on the next adventure.